Good afternoon, Sean here at Mountains Garage. If you've been following along the last two weeks, in three videos we stripped, cleaned, modified, and assembled a Turbo 400 with a trans brake. In that video I mentioned I bought a second trans brake kit and was going to build another transmission to sell. I wasn't sure exactly when I was going to do that, but yesterday morning, Friday, I went to start cleaning up the shop and all my parts are laid out on the white table over there where I assembled the transmission and I thought and, the, and I had a Turbo 400 that I bought from a friend of mine sitting on the floor. What better time to do it than now and that way it's available to sell or fall in love with and keep <laughs> and it just made sense. It was Friday I had other things I could have been doing but I went ahead and started in, stuff in my way, I stripped it, a beautiful transmission, it's a 1986, a friend of mine bought from another friend of mine, it was in a box truck, he went and pulled it out, and he's really good, he, I buy a lot of LS engines from him, he just cuts everything, so you know, the yoke's still there, the half of the dipstick, the tubes, I mean everything is, if you needed to reuse any pieces of that, it comes with it, when I get an LS motor with him, it has from him it has you know the exhaust cut off far enough that you're down below the O2 bungs and stuff and he doesn't hurt a thing does a really good job doesn't hack up the wiring so I'm always happy when I buy stuff from him we do a lot of wheeling and dealing so a month or so ago I bought the turbo 400 that he had bought and it's been sitting here on the floor I put it up on the stand I took the one I finished down set it over the floor put the another greasy one up there it was extremely gooey it had mung and dirt stuck all over it which usually means when you get that stripped off it's a nice looking case I uh, took the yoke off the back drained it it was almost full of beautiful red oil the transmissions in 1986 I'm not sure what year the van was it does have the like the good ranch type tag up near the bell housing but I don't think it is a replacement unit but it definitely had been worked on some it had washes on the filter like I like to do to hold the filter steady it had two o-rings on the top of the filter tube and one on the bottom that doesn't make any sense it had silicone holding uh, on the extension housing even though you couldn't tell because everything was covered it had been running a long time when I took it apart you can still read all the pot numbers on the clutches. Inside it was a beautiful transmission. It was steel piston, but that's pretty common in that era. Until they went to the new design case in 87, 88, they started putting the weaker of the two aluminum pistons in it. So I expected to find steel pistons and I did. No big surprises other than the transmission is beautiful inside. It's a six bolt case with a six bolt pump. That sounds funny, but a lot of times there's an eight bolt case hiding behind a six bolt pump. Uh, helical cut, lower gear set, nothing special, but all really nice. So I started the process of stripping it and right off the bat, I made some common mistakes. So I thought this video, I should highlight how things can get costly in a hurry. And in my case, how you can actually ruin things Let's see what happened. If you're looking at a core and the linkage bracket is almost vertical like this, it's out of a van, which this is out of the van, the transmission I was working on. This is for reference out of a pickup and this runs on the transmission this way. The van pretty much runs this way. That's not a problem, it's just something to note. So I went to take the 15 millimeter nut off on the shift shaft and it was really tight. Nine times out of ten, it will break right loose. I'm using a wrench. It was tight. I should have gone, got the torch, and warmed up the nut. I might have been able to save it. This is $29, almost $30. It was kind of rusty toward the linkage seal. Probably would have cleaned up. Doesn't matter now, because I broke it. I cost myself $30. Bucks. I should have at least attempted to get it apart without wrecking it. But nine times out of ten, it comes apart. Removing the linkage seal. 
Your instinct is to grab a big flat blade screwdriver and pop it out. You can break that area around the Lincoln seal really easy. The short end of a hooked seal remover works really slick. I have great success and don't damage the case. During the case prep process, the pressure port tap where you would do testing, break it loose and I clean it up and reinstall it when I reassemble the transmission. I even painted a different color so it stands out. Now's the time to do it, not when it's in the car and you end up cracking the case or something because it's stuck. Do it now. If it doesn't break right loose, warm it up. When I remove the pump, a big flat bladed screwdriver fits under the pressure regulator on the back side of the pump right there. And over here on this hole, there's two threaded holes on a Turbo 400 pump. I put my slide hammer over here, so I pry here and pop over here, and it comes right out. If you try it just here, it's probably going to cock in the bore, and then you're stuck. So you need to pull on that side and pop on this side. If it's a fresh rebuild, you can pop over here. It'll come right out. But if it has some years on it, the steel pump and the aluminum case, it's going to stick a little bit. When I remove the front seal, I do it from this side. I go at it with a screwdriver in this angle, and then I drive the bushing out afterwards, after I strip the pump. With the stator sticking up through, trying to get the seal out that way with a screwdriver on this side, might do damage. It's just easier to do that from the inside. But before you remove the tail housing, I always start on the top, not the bottom, because leaks are more likely to happen down here than up here. You, the rear seal has a pretty thick lip that normally sticks out. You can get right behind that and pop it out. But then I say I like to start from the top and just work my way around. You don't have to do it all in a couple hits. You can gen gingerly move it out of there so you're not doing a lot of damage to this tail housing, which is 80 bucks or more to replace. Removing the speedometer housing, it's going to be stuck in there pretty good as well. Instinct, you want to grab it right here with pliers where my two fingers are, but put a rag around it first because you don't want to ruin the threads that actually hold the speedometer cable on. So it's okay to grab it right here, but protect the threads. The center support bolt is 3 8 12 point. Make sure your socket is small enough that you're not going to hurt the aluminum. Seems simple, but a lot of sockets are pretty thick and it'll bell that right out. Before you attempt to remove the tail housing bolts, smack on each one with a small ball peen hammer. That'll help break it loose and not pull the threads. If you just hit it with a gun, you got about a 50-50 chance if it's been run a while. Usually up around here is really dry. They're well lubed down here. These will probably come out. These are questionable. These will probably pull the threads. If you smack them first, and then if they start to come out, you know, work them back and forth with the impact, you'll save yourself having to heal the coil. One of the last steps I do when stripping the transmission and one of the first steps of reassembly is to put the shift shaft in and out of the transmission. When you're removing it, let the rooster go down and hit the case and then break the nut loose. You'll have to gently tap on the rooster to get it off those two squares right there. But I've mentioned this in other videos, you need to file. You can go ahead, once the roost is off, you can try to ease it out of the case. But where that's been clamped and run, it's not going to fit through there. And it's going to damage the aluminum hole getting it out. So take your file and carefully work the sharp edges that exist right where my finger is. And keep trying it, and it should pull out easy. If you force it out through the hole, well, that's bad. Before investing a whole lot of time into the case, make sure that small shelf with the center support bolt seals is in good shape. Otherwise, you'll have trouble with second gear down the road, if not right off the bat. Inspect the parking pawl. If you look at this one, it's not in that great a shape. It needs to at least be filed down, measure this dimension, potentially changed. To remove and change the pocket pawl, you need to get this cup plug out of here. You may or may not be successful. I've had great success tapping this whole eighth inch pipe 
and putting a pipe plug in there afterwards to hold it in. So you can try to get it out and back in. You're probably not going to be successful. Drill and tap it, eighth pipe. The pocket and pawl, the shaft, and the clip don't come with an aftermarket case. If you buy like an aftermarket SFI reed case, that stuff doesn't come with it. ATI sells all these parts. Not many people do. And it's a shame to strip a whole case, take that stuff out of it, to put in your new case. And then you got a Chevrolet case sitting around, or whatever the bell housing is, with no use. So that always bothers me. I hate having one or two parts messing that prevent me from building an entire transmission. The electronic kickdown pass-through is plastic, and these little retention clips, sometimes, years of being in hot fluid, they get brittle. This one's pretty flexible. So I'm really careful. That lugs it into the case on the outside. I gently tap it so it's against the case, so these little registers are actually touching the case, and then I'll squeeze it with my hand and either try to wiggle it so they, they stay down because they're starting through the case, or tap from the inside and keep making sure I keep squeezing these three at the same time. And most of the time you'll pop this out of there and save it. Change the O-ring and it's still usable. Because this stupid thing is probably 20 bucks. When I strip a transmission, I take all the big pieces out and just set them on something. The pump's still together, the drums are together. My goal is to get the case empty so I can scrape all the goo off and clean it for the first time and that's going to take an hour and a half maybe i let it cook in the in the machine getting the first layer off while that's in the machine cooking washing for the first time i'll strip the front pump inspect everything because i want to paint this piece i like to paint the pieces individual it makes makes for a better looking transmission and then i'll strip the drums see what i'm going to reuse gather my pots when I take the case out after the first washing, I put in the bucket of bolts, the front pump cover, and the tail housing. Those three fit in my machine pretty well, and I let those run while I modify the case. With the case semi-clean, I drill and tap the vent, like we've covered a few times. So it's teardropped, and it fits the gasket nicely. I trim the ears off, I clean all the gasket surfaces, I stone the surface of the case. You'll see I never got this far in this one. I had center punched the dam of the china wall and just with a drill, drilled straight down. You can see how nice that came out. I drilled by 1 16th hole in that passage right there. These are all instructions that come in the trans brake. Specific to this trans brake, not all trans brakes. And I only had two things left to do before putting it back into wash. I was chasing the threads in the case, and I was going to stone the valve body. I am really careful. I spray a little uh, WD-40 or something in all the thread holes. And in this case, they were going really well. The ones that I can feel the backside, I like to run this right down through. It's cutting like one or two new threads. So I was doing that in this position, and this is where things went wrong. I know the dangers. If you look at the front two bolt holes, you see that casting behind it? That's where the front pump seals. And it's possible, and I knew this, that you can go too far. And that's exactly what I did. I broke a piece of the case because I wasn't paying attention. Now the case is junk. That's just on the, you can see the O-ring if I was to set the pump in there. It's never gonna seal. I took a perfectly good, beautifully clean, nice transmission, and I destroyed it. It is no good for anything but a dummy case. And even to be a dummy case, I have to come up with a tail housing. <laughs> I have a dummy case already that I use, this makes me really sad and it's all my fault I was just moving along I had three or four things going like I normally do there's nobody to blame but myself I was just thinking about something else while I was 
you know, buzzing this in and out. I start it by hand and then I just use my M18 3H drive. Done it a zillion times. And then I ruined a perfectly good case. Oh well. So normally I would have finished modifying the case, put it back in to wash. I'd start working on the lower unit, getting that ready and serviced, modify the output shaft, things I normally do. Pull the clean case out, get it ready to paint, and while the machine's cooling down, I would have thrown the pan in to be clean. That's the last thing I do. I've already scraped that and got that ready during this whole process. So the point where I'm actually painting the case, a lot of my internal parts are ready to go back together. That's the way I try to streamline it. There's a lot of juggling around. But things have to happen in a certain event. And things were rolling along great until about a half an hour ago when I just showed you what I did. Nobody to blame but myself. I'm going to be, I'm going to be mad at myself for quite a while. However, there is a way out. I've jokingly mentioned, but it's the truth, I built seven transmissions for my 72 Nova. Number seven is bolted in. This is number six. I stole the internals out of it and built a Ford Bellhausen eight bolt case unit for somebody else. At the time I had another case that I had cut first and I wasn't sure I was gonna come up with all the internals. So it became the most efficient to strip mine and give them all my stuff. And here's my number six eight bolt case sitting here empty. The case that I broke today, I could have drilled and tapped and made it a seven if I ever needed to do something, but it doesn't have this super strong area here. And that's the mysterious eighth, eighth bolt. Say that 10 times. I didn't want to use this case right now, but I'm going to save it to the end of time because unless the circumstances happen like they do today, when I have a whole transmission that's perfectly good internally, but the case is no good. Otherwise, I'm probably not going to come up with all the pieces to put a transmission together, especially the lower unit. They don't fall from trees. Good thing, because they're heavy. I'm going to have enough drums and pumps and stuff and valve body. I could probably get it done if I had another lower unit. But either way, somewhere along the line, a case has to give up all its parts for me to put this one together. Well, that happened today. So that is my plan. I'll move forward and be mad at myself for quite a while. I can guarantee you I will never make this mistake again. And if I can pass that on to you and you don't make that mistake, well, the world's a better place. Like Waylon Jennings wrote, with any heartache or bad situation, at least you got the makings of a song, or in this case, a video. These are things that can go wrong. All you can do, improvise, adapt, and overcome, move forward, and I will forever carry that moment when I stared down at the broken piece of aluminum I just shook my head. What an idiot. Oh well. Like, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching. We'll do something next time.